peoples with notions of spirituality and mother earth. The format presents an evolution of previous editions of the APS Simbina Biennale that explored notions of the Mediterranean as expressed through art and artistic dialogues, with our ongoing environmental crisis. While whilst contemporary artists from across the world display works that engage with this theme, positing their own aesthetic reply to the perpetual relevance of the Mediterranean and her goddesses, academics and researchers intertwine their praxis on the same thing that's today. Such an international conference focusing on contemporary modern art offers an opportunity for academics, researchers and artists to engage with the art historical and theoretical issues surrounding the theme. Well, a creative project as we So tonight I want to talk about two things. First, I want to sketch out the origins of these theories of prehistoric matriarchies and goddess worship from the first half of the century. And then secondly, I will briefly discuss some examples of modern perceptions of archaeology, uh, particularly the example of Magritte Le Mans um, on this slide. Um, I use the terms matriarchy and prehistoric goddess worship a bit interchangeably, even though I don't think they are synonymous. What I'm referring to is different iterations of theories that associate humanity's earliest cultural strata with female values, whatever you define understanding of that. Um, I want to leave aside for now the can of worm of whether that is true or not. And instead I want to encourage us to think about these theories of history as themselves historically situated, that matriarchy then as now, as I think among many artists and philosophers, was held up as the ultimate other different pieces, uh, prehistoric pieces, but also editions of, of the modern artists. Um, and to the right you have um, an almost contemporary publication by the German archaeologist Schliemann, who is excavating in Troy, so also another prehistoric site, and here he has also a goddess, where in the publication he has added um, a swastika to the pudenda. So you have these two figures that are both part prehistoric, part modern edition, and where the, the politics and the desires of the excavator have been inscribed on the images of female bodies. Um, beyond the Bronze Age, this is the, thank you. Beyond the Bronze Age, the first decades of the 20th century also saw the amazing discoveries of Paleolithic figurines of, uh, of women. And so <coughs> these these also spoke to the sensibilities of modernist artists, in part because they were looked so radically different than, um, than the Greek or Roman antique, the Milk of Dream, from the Surrealist artist Leonore Carrington, another artist who was also interested in matriarchy, um, the Minoans, um, as you see here with her, her drawings with the, the Minotaur. Um, one of the artists, there were several artists who also referenced mythology and goddesses as part of their discussion about ecology, ecological collapse, but also uh, post-colonial cultures. Um, one of the artists that I want to briefly discuss is Marguerite Dumont, a French London-based artist. And she's an artist who often, um, often references goddesses, archaeology, along with speculative world building, ecological collapse, climate change, and new technologies. So for her pieces for the, the Venice Biennale, as you see here, she drew on her reading of the, the myth research, of worship, and matriarchy, and also in this kind of timeless prehistory that can both be located in prehistory, but also be inspired inspiration for creating new futures. They're also interested in the draw of immediate parallel of um, climate change and unstable gender and, and racial relationships in the contemporary world. Um, but I think one thing that sets them apart, these two artists, is maybe their relationship to um, rationality, which was such a big part in the early 20th century, critique uh, or uses of matriarchy, was this critique of which rationality. Both Umo and um, Nising are interested also in intuition and fantasy and speculation. But instead of just disavowing uh, rationality and science, they often both work with technology and with scientists. Janovic is the chief curator in the Ivan Mistrovich Museums in Zagreb. She regularly publishes reviews and articles and devises the curatorial concepts for solo and group exhibitions of modern contemporary art. She was engaged by the British Museum to conceive and curate the exhibition, Rodan, the Thinking the Fragment, for three UK venues. 
Um, and she's also the author of the book, The Mark of Mr. Bitch in Zagreb, and co-author of the book, If I'm Mr. Bitch and the Czechs. So, uh, can you pause the video, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I apologize in advance for my bad pronunciation of Croatian names. Um, so, from the beginning of the first to the beginning of the seventh decade of the 20th century, the artistic of, of sculptor, architect, and professor of sculpture, Ivan Mistrovic, was marked by numerous stylistic changes. It is characterized by the stylistic impulses of Impressionism, Symbolism, Secession, Archaism, Expressionism, Art Deco, Neoclassicism, as well as material. Two interrelated art projects, Artifacts and Collecting of Rodaivik's Sisters. Both projects explore the multiple social biographies of the most popular Cypriot statue of Aphrodite and its copies, the Aphrodite of Soli, an ancient marble statue of the naked goddess with missing arms and legs. And we see here a 3D scan of it that is turned around and it was found online. The two projects bring attention to the multiple manifestations of Aphrodite and how her image is experienced by people today, both within and beyond Cyprus. Before introducing and discussing the two art projects, we begin by situating them within a broader historical and archaeological context, offering a short discussion of Aphrodite as a key cultural symbol of Cyprus, and then turning our focus onto the ancient statue which has provided the inspiration for the two projects. I, I, I am, a, I am a, a 68 child. Who, I mean, we used to believe in total freedom, non-censorship, etc., etc., etc. So I find the male gaze approach, the gender approach, without the minimizing its importance, of course, it's heavily important, and it should be delved into, and it should be sustained, but the approach which is being taken, in my opinion, is...